working with sexually abused victims and trafficking victims for almost five years now. In those five years, I've seen women come in and out of here that have been physically and mentally traumatized. According to the U.S. Justice Department, 17,000 people are trafficked into the United States each year. A lot of these women usually do not want to go into detail about their experience with human trafficking because it is a, such a traumatic experience for them. I try our hardest to get these women help and get them counseling and care. I love my job because I make a difference in these girl, girls' lives. I find in our nation is more known as an international issue. Most of the women trafficked are homeless and are lured in by their traffickers saying that they will give them a better place to live. Victims come to us scared usually, hooked on drugs. They are unsure if they even want to seek help. Tread carefully when it comes to these situations because some victims are so sensitive. A lot of these victims usually come from broken homes and are very helpless and have no one to turn to. Now, run away and targeted. Uh, you don't need any type of force per se to get them involved in various activities. All a trafficker or can needed to do is promise them basic needs like clothing, housing, and food. And those basic needs, if promised, would um, be essentially enough for a lot of these uh, juvenile victims to then essentially prostitute themselves. Okay, but again, it takes into consideration um, what I'm sure you have been discussing all day with the runways and the homelessness and the problems with that. And a lot of these teens that are runaways are, as you said, chronic runaways. And most likely they ran away because there was a difficult situation at home where they might have been physically and or sexually abused. And so it really did not take that much to get these juveniles to then prostitute themselves. Most of the victims they come in contact with are runaways. A lot of the women they deal with say they are in love with their pimps. A lot of the victims are scared to say anything because their pimps threaten them. Is Senate Bill 75 was signed on by the governor on July 2nd, became law, and implemented into effect as Act 105 starting September 2nd. And this kind of brought Pennsylvania from a Tier 3 to a Tier 1, and that's how Blair's project, which is the main NGO, rates the states. So we went from one of the worst states in, in the whole nation to one of the top as far as human trafficking uh, laws that are covered in uh, the Tencent program. A few things are in the law that one of the people like Pearl are working on uh, to prosecute. Uh, a person commits a degree of a second degree felony for trafficking uh, and a felony of the first degree if the person engages in trafficking of a minor. And in the bill, it might lays out a minor to be 18. Some states have it 17 or 16, actually. Uh, another thing is patronizing a victim uh, of knowing that they are a victim of human trafficking, that is a second degree felony. And see, there's asset forfeiture, victim protection, restitution. They're all outlined in the bill. Again, it's two, about 200 pages, but I brought. He added in uh, last minute that if you are a, uh, if you're convicted in cases where the victim is a minor, then you now will be on the mega for the next 25 years. A few things that we lost in the language changes was mandatory law enforcement training. Uh, well, mandatory law enforcement training and a statewide task force, which was, which was huge, and that was a big load at the end. Also, we have no funding whatsoever, which means we have no lead agency in the state. Uh, PCCD is supposed to be the lead, but it all is contingent on them having funding. So we're kind of this place now where I know you and I have been talking a lot, and we're like, what are we supposed to do? Like, we have this 200-page bill. It's now law. So under a lot of leader, leadership from here, I have to say, uh, we have this implementation work group that is set up. We have our first meeting in November, our first in-person meeting on November 12th. And that's going to talk about things such as how to implement this as far as logistics, public awareness, victim services training, data collection, legal research, technical assistance for the courts and attorneys, and also exploring possible grants and other funding that could possibly come down. We have a few things in mind, and hopefully they happen. Lastly, and I'm not saying this just because you're here, our state quarter broke up. 